Now, the 90s, especially that 96 draft, had a lot of players in there. Yeah, Kobe. Yeah, AI. Ray Allen. Stephon Marbury. Marcus Camby. Peja Stokovic. The list goes on. But there's one player on that list, a high draft pick, that never, let's say, really got the credit. I want to call him an average player. He was an all-star. But he just played on three crappy teams and didn't get to the playoffs for the first time until 06. And his name is Sharif Rahim. Now, like I said, the man was the third pick. He was a uh, played his co- uh, high school ball in Marietta, Georgia. His real name is Julius Sharif Adurahim. Uh, he was a first team parade All American. I don't think he was a McDonald's All American. No, I don't think he was. Uh, he was two time Mr. Georgia basketball in 94 and 95. And he would end up going to Cal Berkeley in the uh, deciding to go in there in the summer of 95. He played only one there from 95 to 96. And then he was drafted third pick overall in that 96 draft by the Vancouver Grizzlies. Most position was powerful and small for it. Uh, let's say getting drafted was getting dra- <laughs> got drafted to Vancouver Grizzlies, which was the expansion team at the time. Pretty much sucks to be on there, but he didn't complain. He became their best player. I think his whole time in Vancouver, I think he was their best player. Then Mike Bibby. Um, let's see here. He became their leading sc- instantly. He instantly became their leading scorer, and setting the franchise record at eighteen point seven points per game. He was a shooter. He can also post up, and he also rebound. Cause his first year was six point nine. And he can get some assists with 2.2 per averages per game. He was the only good thing about the 96-97 season. He finished third in overall balloting and rookie of the year behind AI and Stephon Marbury. But he was picked for all-rookie first team. By the end of that season's rookie year, he led the team scoring 32 times and led the team in rebounding 23 times. Uh, for the next few seasons, why he was in Vancouver and why the Grizzlies were in Vancouver. He is pretty much the centerpiece of that team. His averages went up to 22.3, 7 rebounds and 2 assists. And he went up again for his third year at 23.7.5 rebounds 3.4 assists. Like I said, he, he was pretty decent in his younger years. He got a career high of 39 points that year and 13 rebounds. And a triple overtime loss to the Boston Celtics. And like I said, with all his efforts, all his scoring, they never really had a full team around him. And it was always at the bottom. That's where the Vancouver was. Bottom of the Midwest Division in his first four years of the league. And I think his last year there, he averaged um, 20 points a game. And. Yeah, that's how his career in Vancouver ended because the next year after that, the Hawks decided to trade for him. And the 27 overall pick that was exchanged for Bevan Knight, Lorenzo Wright, rest in peace to him. And, of course, who I thought should have been on that top 75 list as well, Paul Gasol as third overall pick in the 2001 NBA draft. This was good for Sharif. He would return home. His hometown of Atlanta, from here out of Georgia, was outside of Atlanta. But the Hawks was thinking this might work with him and the young Jason Terry. But it didn't work because in the 2001-2002 season, he would only average 33. Uh, he would only average 32 points. That's a lot. No, he would. That team would only get 33 L wins and 49 L's. But Individually for Sharif, he got a career high in points in 50 one game. And he was also selected for an All-Star game that season. His only All-Star game in his whole career. 
Um, much of his time on the Atlanta Hawks, he pretty much did the same as he did with Vancouver. Vancouver, not Vancouver. Vancouver. Uh, he was the sixth youngest player in NBA history to reach ten thousand points. And but I think the next year the Hawks end up getting Glenn Robinson, teaming it up with Jason Terry and Cherie, and it was the highest trio in the league of that year at fifty-seven point nine points per game. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, the reason why I say that's amazing because I don't think any other trio around that time was doing that at all. I'm trying to think of the trio that would have been around 2003. Maybe if it was 2003-2004 season. No, it wasn't. It was 2002-2003, so that, that wouldn't make sense. But once again, even with scoring 57.9 points between those three, the Hawks still would get to the playoffs. But Sharif will average 19.9 points per game, 8 rebounds, and play all but one of the Hawks' games. But he ended up getting traded. The general manager at the time had enough. So he decided to do something different. Sharif will, excuse me, will be traded to the Portland Trailblazers along with Theo Ratcliffe, Dan Dickow, on February 9th, 2004, in exchange for Rasheed Wallace and Wesley Person. And I think Rasheed Wallace played one game and ended up getting traded again to the Detroit Pistons. And you know what happened after that. Um, Sharif, his average just went lower on the Trailblazers. I think he only averaged 16 points both seasons. And then grabbed seven rebounds both seasons um, for his two seasons in Portland. And at the end of that time, he will become a free agent. His time in Portland was pretty much... Forgettable. I don't even remember him being on Portland. I don't even remember seeing any highlights. Anyways, he was supposed to be traded in a sign and trade agreement with the New Jersey Nets for a first round draft pick, but it didn't work out. I think Portland was planning on trading. Uh, I think Portland may end up trading that to Suns for Barbosa, Leonardo Barbosa. But. The trade didn't go through with the sign of the Nets due to scar tissue and Sharif's knee. And it was put in a hold and had all this second opinion, third opinions. By that time, I think it was all by the time the season began, I think uh, it didn't happen. And uh, Sharif, I don't think he wanted to be uh, um, part of that. Also, at this time, I think he was 30. I think he just became 30. So, you know how players on 30, sometimes they do good and sometimes they start to decline. Uh, but anyways, he was signed a contract as a free agent with the Sacramento Kings. He only started in 30 or 72 games. As a starter, he averaged 16 points a game and 6 rebounds. He was teamed up with Rana Test as well. I think it was Rana Test, Gerald Wallace. I'm not, let me see who was on that team. Just to be sure. Just to be sure. But yeah, that 05 06 season with the Sacramento Kings be his Sharif's only time. His only time in the playoffs. And I think who was on that team was Ron Artest, Bonzi Wells, Mike Bibby, and Brad Miller. I thought Jared Walsh was on that team. Yeah, I could be wrong. But, like I said, they'll finish 8th, get to the playoffs, and lose 4-2 to Oh, was he on that team? No, he was not on that team. Sorry for that. But, yeah, they were, uh, they had Kevin Martin on that team. That's what I was thinking of. But, anyways, um, they will lose 4-2 to the Spurs. And I think that's the same year uh, Miami Heat won the playoffs. So that's how that season ended. In his second season with the Kings, um, he came more. Sharif became more of a six man off the bench, of course, but they wouldn't get to the playoffs. And then that was the last time he would go to the playoffs. The last time the Kings been to the playoffs for that year, he only averaged nine point nine points a game. And the two thousand seven two thousand eight season was his last year due to that same knee who 
gave him trouble before, gave him more trouble, and he would retire in 08 and join the Kings coaching staff. He would become the assistant general manager for the Kings, then become the director of player personnel for the Kings, and he ended up leaving the team's organization by 2014. Uh, I guess he couldn't get along. Suppose he couldn't get along with Mike Malone and the other general manager, but anyways. And I think now currently he is the president of the G League, so huh, it worked out for him. Uh, he was also an Olympic gold medalist in that 2000 Olympic Games. I think he replaced Grant Hill, who was injured. I think Grant Hill was, that was most of the time Grant Hill was injured too. So he got a gold and far as career averages is concerned, in his time in the NBA, he only got 15,000 points, which equals out to 18.1 points per game, 6,000 rebounds, 7.5 rebounds per game, and 2,000 assists, which is 2.5 assists per game. Like I said, he got an all-star. He's a rookie first team. Uh, college, third-team All-American, Pac-10 Player of the Year in 96, Freshman of the Year in 96 for Pac-10, First-team All-Pac-10, First-team Parade All-American, and once again, two-time Mr. Georgia Basketball. I, I don't know if those equal to Hall of Fame numbers, but who knows? Anybody can get in the Hall of Fame now. But as far as he, him is concerned, uh, he was a scorer, as you can tell. He can get to the basket, post up, shoot, do all that, like I said before. Defensive-wise, uh, I don't know. I don't think he was that great on defense. But he, for him, he was unlucky, very unlucky, and unfortunate to play on the Grizzlies, the Hawks, and Portland, and Sacramento. Playing on those four teams, it's going to be bad for you during that time. Like I said, he wasn't a bad player. Just played on bad teams. I got two of his jerseys. Well, I only got one now. I had his Hawks jersey. But I got his, uh, currently have his Vancouver Grizzlies jersey sitting in my closet. So, yeah. So, unfortunately, now we got to play with, on a, well, good team. But I think he's all right with his career. Not many people get to the NBA. But if you were able to play in the NBA for as long as he did, I think it's all right. But um, that's Sharif Abdul-Rahim. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, but he was decent. So tell me what you guys think about it, if you guys remember him. I don't think some of these young kids remember him. But tell me, people my age and older, tell me what you guys think about him.